What's up, everybody? My name is Steven Sanchez, and if you're following me for the first time, thank you. Hit that subscribe button if you're so inclined to do so. We haul. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm gonna get straight to it. Uh, this video is about me drawing the final pencils to Beast. They're, he's in transformation mode. This is a commission, uh, and I figured, hey, why not do a drawing video? Because kind of, you know. Why not? All right, so we got the zoomed in version ready to rock and roll, and let's get let's get started. In the meantime, during this process, I will chit chat and and get to certain points about uh, certain things that I'm doing and how I do it. Figured I'd do the book first because it's the easiest thing, right? So I do this stuff digitally, and then that way we uh, we can save on uh, on the ink process for those uh, wanting to save a few bucks but that's the reason why I do it and for the most part it's easier I, I can have something for like digital art books and stuff like that not that I do use this stuff in digital art books anymore because I like to illustrate with my own stuff I go ahead and I use the the artwork that I like to, to, to utilize for my own stuff, which is the Koga Warrior stuff, which you guys will definitely be hearing a lot of soon. So, so far, um, this is the middle the middle jacket. It's kind of an, uh, an odd way of me doing detail. Sometimes I'll, I'll detail stuff and be like, I don't even remember throwing that in there like that, but it's in there, so. Why not? The only crappy part is like, if there's a line that I don't want in here and it's already in gray, uh, I have to I have to utilize it, you know what I'm saying? So which is the reason why I tend to give it a few days after I'm done doing the the, the digital because there's always something that I find that I'm gonna want to change. I just wrapped up a poison ivy piece. There were definitely a lot of things that that needed to be changed and I didn't wanna I kept you know I kept saying that hey I'm gonna ship it out soon but it's just like it, it sucks because I, I wanna give you the best product and I don't wanna want to give you something that you're gonna be like ah this kind of sucks even though they may like it sometimes the clients don't like it the way it is but as an artist you're like ah, give me one more day <laughs> you know and it's uh it's it's how i tend to to work and for the most part a lot of the clients are 100 forgiving like, yeah go ahead take your time blah 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 you know so i kind of seize that moment to, to go ahead and wrap up a better piece than than initially i thought i was going to give them which is weird to say that out loud like that not saying i was gonna give you a sucky piece but i'm I, I like to take my time the whole point is i like to take my time with the piece and and work the areas and then the final beast which i love the old school jim lee version i always felt that was a true beast look x-men movies they got it right I, I i dug the way uh the way uh the guy that plays frazier i forget his name now the way he uh, portrayed him i thought that was dope there's a lot of page flipping when it comes to penciling so there's artists who love to play background music there's artists who who love to stay super quiet when drawing I'm the type that I if I get bored I like I like to to, to have nothing playing in the background and just have my thoughts but I also get bored out of my gourd if if I'm just drawing and I'm not thinking or doing anything because at that time I'll be just tired so I tend to communicate more so it feels like hey man you talk a lot throughout the video because like, I'm trying not to fall asleep because I have to edit this afterwards I mean there's no secret there I I, I I have to edit this I have to add music later there's no music playing now and I can't really think so I mean, if not, then I'm super quiet and then it's just, it feels awkward. I'll probably do that in a video to see how it does turn out. But for the most part, that's the reason why I tend to speak. Plus you get information, why not, right? So it's a two for one deal right there. Oh, but now you stay quiet. <laughs> yeah, I do that a lot by myself too. <laughs> I give myself a hard time. So I'm kind of in that influx phase right here where it's like, okay, well, I got to draw the thick lines and then thinner lines on this one. 
And for those who don't understand what the hell I'm doing, that's fine. You'll see it in a second. Uh, also, when doing the when doing the the copying of because this is the copy, right? Right. This is the digital copy onto the paper, and now I'm technically copying my pencils upon it. But at the same time, you don't want to make it look 100% like it because then it, it kind of feels like you're you're tracing. And I have to have my own little little pizzazz on top of it, like another penciler drew it, so I'm adding my own spin to it. And that's how you get more of a of a free open look. Like like if there's two different people working on it, even though I'm the artist, but I'm never happy with what lines I've thrown down. So I tend to embellish a bit more. And that's that's what I try to do here. I'll add double lines, I'll I'll push the line a little bit more. So it feels like, well, I'm fixing what this artist did. I'm making it better. I'm plussing it, as they would say in Disney. And that's that's the whole point behind this uh, stage here is to, to make it better and not to just get a piece out. So if you're doing commissions, guys, don't don't just rush to get a commission out just because you're, you're getting making a quick buck. I mean, once you get to a, a caliber of this stage of artistry, you know, for me, I'm an illustrator, so this is an artistry within this stage. I don't really do pencil shadings or anything like that. But don't don't try to screw yourself. You know, just you're making money doing this stuff, so give that client, you know, what they ordered. I, but this was like I think 100 bucks, and I tend to try to make it look like a four or five hundred dollar piece, and I take my time with it. You know, am I a sucker for doing that? Not really. It's just I'm like, if, you know, people what, what they want, but I mean, eventually my prices will go up. So it's sort of like, well, I guess I'm doing that, that taste test. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to go up. I'm not saying when, I don't know yet, but at the same time, I'm not greedy. So I was like, eh, it is what it is. There we go. See that? I'm using a number nine, so I'm I'm gonna just have fun with the the thicker pencil lead here and up here. I could probably use a seven. The nine works fine too, but it feels a little heavy. Long strokes. At this point, I use uh, my elbow and my wrist. If it's real long, it'll it'll I'll work from my elbow. Here, I'm using my wrist to really flick flick those lines and get as close to the. Uh, the work here as possible there we go I have to probably look at my reference image to make sure that I'm shading these right but uh, I think I am I'll sometimes print out a small version so I can look at it because my digital stuff is back there and I don't want to have more crap on the desk so I sit back I look at it and I say all right cool I hit pretty much 98% of the lines that I wanted to little by little so I did a few things I've been a very bad boy uh, so I decided to uh, to do the stippling and get in there nice and and tight with the stipples and then go over here and stipple this area I also finished up the, the front side of the chest why not right so we're gonna shade that later off cam because uh, you don't need to see any of that. And then a lot of the dates are over here with just line work. So all this stuff is just, I keep off cam because there's just no need for that. And then over here, we're gonna do some of the, uh, the drawings for the face. So I'm gonna use a number seven because it's exciting. Oh, seven, oh, almost used a five. Oh. Seven. Sorry, I won't do that again. And then see more of this riveting stuff we call artwork come into play. Now with the seven, it's smoother. The same lead, HB lead. It's just smoother with the um, with the attack on the uh, paper. This paper is from Eon. I bought this years ago with my logo on it. And uh, if you can see the logo right there, Honest in Productions. Don't forget the name, honestinproductions.com. That's right, it's live. Uh, still working on the website, but there's uh, the shop is working 
the updates section is working on. All right, so we got a couple of lines in. Sometimes you get in that first try. Uh, sometimes you don't. Mons has nuts. Mons don't. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I don't know. Nice thick line. There we go. Right on. So we have all the striations in. I still need to draw his headshot. So I'm not gonna get in there with with any of these uh, with a seven lead. It's too it's too thin, and you have to build it too much. So I was saying before that I am using the the Eon paper. Uh, it's good paper. It's it, at the time it was called HD. I don't know if the guy's calling it that anymore. But it was called HD, so it's supposed to be like a thicker a thicker, uh, like a Strathmore paper, but it feels the same, so, I mean, I don't know. But it does feel just a hair thicker. It's very, very thick. Uh, I do pass it through the printer just fine. No problems there. All right, so the thicker paper, uh, it tends to grab more of my lead because it's, it feels, it feels very, aggressive uh, and so it get more of the lead gets gets uh, I guess spun down and so a lot a lot of the a lot of the lead gets on the on the sheet so if I if I were to smudge it right now you can you can see it it'll it'll smudge fairly quickly um for anybody that's used to like paper like this then they know that it's it's something they may like I'm not sure I, I like more of my paper that I get from from Walmart it's a cardstock but they don't make it on 11 by 17 uh, it's good paper it's just I, I'm, I'm just used to smoother paper stock I'm pretty sure they have smooth paper over there too all right so we're gonna draw this here Uh, for the most part, all of this is just line work. It's nothing. It's not really drawing. This is this is the the finishing stages. So it's just how I go about it. I think I have all the lines in the darkness underneath here, just so that that t-shirt bottom pops a little better. Right on. So that looks like it's all set. The bottom half is all set, and we should be able to wrap this up. So let's attack it right now. And sometimes it's good to just sit back and assess the situation and be like, all right, what areas need more shading? What areas need more line weight variation? There are some spots that I am seeing now that I couldn't see while I was doing the digital version that needs some variation. And then that's when you attack the final. And jump in real quick over here on the mouth. I don't apply too much pressure when it comes to first throwing down the, the lines because uh, you can create chaos real quick. So I go real light with the pressure. In my, my guidebook that I have over on my Patreon, it's free. You can download that. That first guidebook that I created talks about pressure control, which is pretty much the essential part to learning how to illustrate. You want to learn that part first. It was taught to me by my art teacher. My art teacher was really good. He 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 uh, was a painter, so he he taught a bunch of degenerates that didn't care anything about art, real art. And I wish me that is now was in his class back back in the day, because I would have been listening to every every word he was saying. The respect that I got for him wasn't earned to like my junior year of high school when he brought in one of his paintings. Cause you hear art teachers talk so much about their artwork and this, this and that. Some, some do, some don't. In his case, I'm like, well, if you're teaching it, then show it. Why did he show it? The art that is. And he brought in a painting that he did from his view of the town. And it was just like, Amazing. I, I've never seen anything like that in person in my life. So I can see that, you know, sometimes when people are like, they want to go to art museums and stuff, you know, you see it on TV and it's it's not the same impact. 
You know, you see it in, in real life. You're like, whoa. That's like watching um, musicians play live. Like really good musicians. Whew. I got to see an orchestra play. Not, not a band, but an orchestra. And wow. It, it's, it's just amazing uh, to, see, to see something like that play out in, li in real life. And to hear all the notes and everything, just everything sounded perfect. It was amazing. I, it was in a wedding, but it was like, wow. It was one of the coolest uh, things I've ever seen. Seen and heard. Once again, uh, at the end of the piece, I, I'll go in and, because I do this with my digital stuff too. I'll go in and see anything that looks off or looks like it's kind of tracy looking. Because you, you can kind of have a traced look to something like you're just copying it you know one for one and and for the most part i am but at the same time i'm adding a little pizzazz to it to give it a little bit of life so i'm not trying to make sh make sure that every line is on the line that i drew because it gets boring it's, it, it's just that monotonousness of of the piece uh while you're illustrating it is what really gets you bored so i just kind of switch up switch it up just a little bit just a hair But normally I would, I wouldn't even do uh, the shadow lines yet. I I just line art the crap out of the whole piece. But normally when I have them all pre pre done, it's like ah, it's already done. Let me just add add those extra thick to thin lines. There's a cut in there for the shadow and for the light part. So I'm I'm gonna go in here like really tight with the dark. And for anybody who says that up shots are hard. In the beginning, they're hard. But once you understand how to figure out the shapes and what you're looking at, it actually becomes a lot, a lot more simpler. And a lot more fun. Um, back in the day, you'd have artists tell you, just practice, practice the hardest part that annoys you the, the most first and master that. That way everything else seems simple. And that's what I did. And upshots were like really hard in the beginning. But now I enjoy uh, drawing them. It doesn't even phase me anymore. Just have fun with the process while you're doing it. If you're getting frustrated, you're trying way too hard. You need to simmer down now. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Simmer down now. Nah. You don't want to be, be that guy losing it. I don't get it, man. Don't be that guy. There's all these little pieces. I Back in the day, I used to want to just like, oh, I just want to be done with those little pieces. Like Now it's like, they're the most fun part because I take my time with them. Try to make sure that the shadow is, is going in that same direction. So it doesn't look weird or or get muddled in the pencil in the pencil mode uh, muddled or muddy is when it's the pencil lead starts getting soft around the edges so I kind of have to twist my pencil to get the sharp edge again and you want to you want to definitely keep keep things nice and sharp Herlets. I think that's a word, isn't it? Huh? So Beast is, uh, his face is almost done. The teeth are the fun part. Now, do you have to draw every single tooth? No. Uh, that's a choice thing. I used to just draw kind of like that cartoon look. But then, you know, comics change and you start kind of saying, hey, the drawing the teeth kind of looks cool and every single tooth. And you, yeah, you get in there and you just kind of, you draw those little lines in there. So like right here, I just drew the, the straight line. I then I have to draw the, the extras, but I can draw the, the little gum indentation on the bottom. Just even a little line can give the, the hint of the, uh, the gums. And I'll save you tons of time. And the whole point is to, that it looks good. You don't have to do it realistically. Keep it simple. Even the realistic stuff, you can keep simple too. A lot of, lot of realistic artists do 
to that. And once again, the Onison website is up and running. It's pronounced Onison, O-N-I-X-A-N. And for those who missed it in the other video, got it trademarked, yes. If you got to bet on, your, on something or someone, you got to bet on yourself first. So that's that's the, the end goal of this stuff here is to produce your own, your own stuff. Uh, the, the reason why I'm doing this is because it's a commission. If not, I'd be drawing my own characters right now. Because that's the whole point, right? So, and that's what I'm trying to do is, is, is uh, get into the, uh, the habit of getting my, my characters illustrated the way I'm doing this type of stuff. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I get to create a bunch of characters on camera. It's pretty much like a, like a video uh, diary for myself. The Dark Diaries of Sanchez. I like it. All right. Um, it's all pretty much straight lines from here on out. As so I just try to attach everything and see, see I have to follow that line. I just kind of went at it like whatever. Whatever. This is straight lines, but I might do it all in black because it'll look better. It, it pops the characters out more. Uh, these straight lines are, are cool, but Daddy's run tired of it. I'm on dates. Boom. Here's the final image. Everything looks intact, and we're good to go. So with that said, guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Another one done. Yeah.